Welcome to the Bambanani series. Every child has a right to quality education and teaching inclusively can contribute to achieving that goal. This series of videos illustrates how teachers are teaching inclusively in South African classrooms. The videos focus on teaching numeracy and literacy in the foundation and intermediate phases. To support participation and learning by all learners, the teachers in the clips differentiate their teaching methodologies, content and assessment strategies, and classroom environment. Let's join hands to teach every child. I taught a data handling lesson. We used bar graphs to organize recycling items or recyclable items, plastic, glass, tin and metal. I'm a maths education specialist where I've got a lot of experience both teaching in the classroom as well as um, lecturing at a university level. Okay, paper, cans and glass. Okay, what else? What else can we recycle, Z? Plastic. Plastic. All right. So now we know what recycling is. It's very important so that we don't use too many things on our planet and create more rubbish. All right, it's difficult for us to try and get rid of it. So what we're going to do is we have got dustbins in front of us, okay? I'm going to put you into groups. So I'm going to need everyone to come to the carpet so that I can put you into your groups, wait. All right, you're going to come uh, to the carpet. I'm going to put you in your groups and I'm going to tell you if you're in group one. If you're in group one, you'll sit there. Group two will sit at the back there. Group three, group four, and group five. Okay, don't worry about your chair bags or anything like that. We will go back to our own desks afterwards. So the first thing that we saw in this classroom was mixed ability grouping, where our teacher divided our, the, the, the learners into different groups. And I thought this was really great because each group had learners of differing abilities, which meant that um, stronger learners would be able to help weaker learners. Organizing learners into differentiated groups. I know my learners. It's very important to know your learners when you're doing, when you're doing groups, um, especially differentiated groups. So mixed ability groups, I ended up um, sorting my learners from the, the weak learners in terms of mathematics to the strong learners. And I had five different groups and then I took one learner from each group to make five mixed ability groups. I gave the learners a, a big graph and they had to physically organize the pieces into the correct, into the correct uh, column. Now you can see at the bottom, what different items are we looking for? Emma. Paper, metal, or tin, plastic, glass. And plastic and glass, good, okay. And how many um, uh, bars are there on the side? There's eight, okay. So we shouldn't have more than that in our dustbins, all right. So what you're going to do is you're going to look in your dustbins. If you pick up something and it's paper, you're going to put it in the first block, paper. If you get another piece that's paper, you're going to put it on top there. Okay, so only one item per block. What I find so amazing about this is that we know that maths is often learnt through dialogue and in social situations. So um, when, when learners are in groups, they are really able to, to talk to each other, to start to reason. I think having mixed ability groups is effective uh, because learners tend to lose confidence when they're working individually and they, their work is incorrect. I think learners are sometimes afraid to ask for help and it, um, it, it ends up lowering their self-esteem. So having them in a, a mixed ability group is better because the stronger learners can help the other learners and they feel still feel like they're on par with them. The one bit of reasoning that I saw in this classroom which was really great was a spice bottle that was both glass with a plastic lid and I saw this really amazing conversation going on between the learners is is this gl glass or is it plastic and one of the learners decided well it's mostly glass so it should be put into the glass category. Yeah, yeah. Is this one piece here? But then another learner unscrewed the cap and said, well, the cap is plastic and the glass is glass, so we can actually separate these. 
I also really enjoyed the way the teacher walked around the class to give individual attention to learners that needed it. And um, this is a great way of, of um, the teacher being responsive to individual learners' needs. And if there are some learners who do require extra support from the teacher, she is available there. So within the groups, the teacher then can also provide this extra support to, to learners who need it. Were there any that were the same, Jessica? Um. Okay, glass and paper were the same and metal or tin and plastic were the same. All right, so actually the one that you had the most of was metal or tin and plastic. Although they were in groups, I still walked around the class to almost accommodate the learners that I knew would still struggle with the activity. However, when I did go to the groups, I, I made it seem like I was asking the whole group for for help, if they needed help, if they needed assistance, instead of asking that specific learner. So if one of the learners did say they weren't, they weren't sure where to put this or if they'd mix something up. So I have put the colors here on your paper. What you are going to do is remember how many items you had in your dustbin today that you put on your graph and you are going to color them the same color as the dustbins. Okay, so if you had four plastic, you are going to color where it says plastic, in blue up to the number four. Even when they were doing the individual activity and I, I kind of handed them an extra worksheet knowing that they had made a mistake, but they figured it out on their own. So um, walking around is very important, especially for the, for the learners that do need the help without making them seem like, like you're attacking them. Implementing inclusive um, education in your class isn't difficult. You do need to know the learners. Each learner has a different ability, especially with a specific subject. So maths, for example, which we've just done, they do have different capabilities. So you need to know those learners and be able to identify them. So it does require some planning. It's not difficult. You do need to, to organize them beforehand and not, it, it will take time. So you do need to make sure that you are organized for the lessons especially when you're doing differentiated groups. It's amazing to see how it boosts the children's confidence, especially the weaker learners, and it's definitely something everyone should look at doing in their classes.